think my emotional state um, is separate from uh, the diligence I put into into making my work because um, you know part of being an artist is uh, it's your practice should be I think um, a daily a daily thing you know, you go into the studio and, and you just you just work at it and and there's something kind of um, uh, mechanical and un unemotional about that process but you still can't help to be to be human so you know your body's just sort of this this mechanical vehicle for your emotions and um, you know I just I, I keep trying to keep um, that vehicle operating uh, on a daily basis and um, you know the fuel can be um, you know can be subdued it can be uh, uh, angry, but hopefully it'll always run. Uh, and my worst fear is, um, uh, you know, being crippled by some kind of depression and not being able to get up and, and do anything. But um, I think by forcing myself to to uh, to work, uh, it kind of defeats any any kind of um, you know uh, emotional. Uh, emotionally debilitating uh, feelings that can happen. My design philosophy is, I think, uh, uh, a concentration on, on aesthetics, on virtuosity, on um, the sublime, on um, profanity, and on the, uh, exploring the, um, the whole spectrum of, of uh, visual um, communication. And, and, uh, and dreams. I had a time machine and, and went back in, into my early days as an artist. I think um, I would try and, and uh, actually I, I probably wouldn't do anything too differently. I, it's, it, it's all, it's, it all seems to have worked out, you know, through all the, uh, the disappointments and the, re the rejection and um, uh, and the lessons learned along the way. Um, I think the, the important lesson I learned was that um, uh, early on was that I, I, uh, I should always make the work that I'm interested in rather than trying to fulfill the expectations of, of someone else. And um, that, that lesson came about only after a few assignments and you know, I tend to learn quickly so um, yeah, I don't think I would really, really change anything, um, art career-wise.